ever had the feeling that you were being followed? That somebody's eyes were on you, but you just weren't sure where the eyes were? That you weren't quite alone when you thought you were or felt that you were in imminent danger? Ever felt that, well, something wasn't quite right? 99% of the time, these feelings are just feelings. Maybe we were tired or a bit worse for wear after a late night out. Normally, it is just our brain tricking us into paranoia because we're conditioned to be cautious of the dark. But there have been cases where people's gut feelings have been right. And just like that, they have vanished without a trace. There are disappearances that have not been solved to this day. Even the most seasoned investigators in the best police departments simply can't work out what has happened or where a person has gone. It is like they have, quite literally, disappeared into thin air. The Unexplained Disappearance of Kenny Veach Kenny Veach was a 47-year-old avid hiker of the Mojave Desert in Nevada. On November 10, 2014, he told his family he planned to go on a two-day hike in the mountains and look for a cave. He never returned. Veach was an experienced hiker who often took solo trips to explore the Mojave and Great Basin deserts of Nevada and California respectively. He was a minimalist or ultralight hiker. Even though he would camp out for days at a time, he only ever brought the bare minimum of supplies. He rarely brought a GPS, compass or map. Although he had successfully completed many hikes in his lifetime in that manner, it is still an incredibly reckless way to hike. Veach had a YouTube channel under the name Snakebit McGee, where he had uploaded a few videos but mostly used it to watch and comment on others. His channel name came from his tendency to pick up snakes whenever he found them. He was bitten by a rattlesnake, which is where his tag name came from. On June 2014, he commented on a video titled Son of an Area 51 Technician. In his comment, he stated that he had found an M-shaped cave about seven miles out from Nellis Air Force Base in the Sheep Mountains, which are north of Las Vegas, Nevada. He explained that he was an experienced hiker who regularly found abandoned mine shafts and explored them, picked up rattlesnakes for fun, solo hiked across mountains, other would fear to go, and even came close to Area 51. Despite all this, he never went into the M cave. He claimed that as he began to enter the hidden cave, his entire body began to vibrate. The further in he went, the worse the shaking became. He suddenly grew very scared and quickly ran out of the cave and hiked back to his car. His comment sparked an interest with others who encouraged Beach to go out and discover the cave again, this time filming the entire hike. He agreed and left to find it a second time, carrying along with him a video camera and a 9mm handgun. He posted a video of his hike, but unfortunately was unable to find the mystery cave. The viewers criticised him and provoked him to go out a third time. On November 10th, 2014, he left for an overnight trip, but never came back. After two days and no return, his family contacted authorities who conducted a search. In the beginning of the video he had previously posted, he stood by an abandoned mine shaft while narrating his mission details. It was at that mine shaft that search and rescue found his cell phone, ten days after the search began. Over 30 search and rescue volunteers conducted three separate searches and a helicopter flyover to no avail. The trail went cold after that. Many conspiracy theories cropped up. Did he fall down the mine shaft, Or had he stumbled upon a hidden entrance to Area 51 and discovered a dangerous military secret? Was he just a reckless hiker who injured himself or did he reach the M cave and find something ominous inside? A woman claiming to be his girlfriend later posted a comment on his last video that stated she did not believe he had had an accident. She explained that he had been suffering from depression for some time and had quit his job the year prior, so she argued that he had most likely taken his own life. So far, no conclusion has yet to be drawn about Kenny Beach's mysterious disappearance. What do you think the truth is? Teresa Gibson disappears from the Great Smoky Mountains. 
On October 8, 1976, Teresa Lynn Gibson, also known as Trenny, went on a field trip to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. She travelled with 35 to 40 of her classmates from Bearden High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Despite being surrounded with a group and other hikers, 16-year-old Trenny mysteriously disappeared from the park. The field trip was odd to begin with. There were almost 40 students, yet only one teacher to supervise them, plus the bus driver. According to some students, they were not even informed of their field trip destination until they arrived at the park. Only then did they find out that they would be hiking about 1.8 miles from Klingman's Dome to Andrews Bald, and then returning to the Forney Ridge Trail. When students began their hike, they split up into smaller groups based on their walking speed. Throughout the day, Trenny walked at different paces with various groups of classmates. However, at some point in the afternoon, she mysteriously vanished. She was last seen by classmates near Klingman's Dome at 3 p.m. They were hiking along a fairly steep trail with thick vegetation and sudden drop-offs. Apparently, she glimpsed something on the right side of the trail and left the path. That was the last time anyone saw her. Rescue teams began searching for her in the late afternoon. The weather and fall foliage made it difficult for search and rescue to use helicopters and inspect the trail. Instead, they used tracking dogs to pick up her scent. There were around six teams of bloodhounds and German shepherds that searched and picked up her scent near the juncture of the Klingman's Dome Trail and the Appalachian Trail. They followed her scent past Klingman's Dome Tower up until a mile and a half from Newfound Gap. The scent then disappeared along the roadside. Multiple theories have arisen and suspects investigated. Some believe Trenny was in Klingman's Dome Observation Tower while the initial search was being conducted because it was never inspected. Once the searchers left, she travelled to the roadside where she got into a car, either voluntarily or against her will. There are some reports of cigarettes and beer cans found along the roadside. Trenny's classmate, Robert Simpson, was implicated as a suspect since her hairbrush was discovered in his car but police quickly dismissed the idea. Trenny's parents, Robert and Hope Gibson, informed the police of a previous break-in by a young man whom Mrs. Gibson shot at. After being shot, he threatened to hurt their daughter. Although the authorities investigated this man, there were no leads for them to follow. Searches were conducted extensively through October and then again from April 18th to May 5th, 1977, but to no avail. Searches resumed in 1981 as well, but they never found anything. Kim Pouncey, a friend of Trini's, gave an interview in November 2017 for an episode of Appalachian Unsolved where she expressed her doubt of an abduction. She believes Trini left of her own accord and had someone waiting for her in the park, that she had planned it because she wanted to leave and get away. After so many searches, the rangers of the National Park were convinced that she was not in the park. Her body was never found. There are no current suspects, leads, or evidence. It's strange that a young girl could vanish while on a popular trail in the middle of the day surrounded by people. Whether she orchestrated her own disappearance or was kidnapped will remain a mystery. Christy Lynn Vorak Christy Lynn Vorak was living with a foster family in 1982, when on Halloween of that year she went missing. There was a reported sighting of her at a bus stop that evening in Seattle, Washington, but investigators were unable to confirm whether it was actually her. Vorak was a 13-year-old white female at the time of her disappearance. She was described as being 5 foot 3 and 110 pounds with brown hair and hazel eyes. In order to assist with finding her, age progression photographs were created to attempt to visualize what she might look at ages 29 and 43 if she was still alive. A distinguishing feature that was noted was the middle finger on her left hand, which was shorter than the rest as a result of a birth defect. Vorak's mother still believed her to be alive, although authorities were not convinced of this. It was believed instead that she may have been a victim of Gary Ridgeway, also known as Green River, although this too was never confirmed. This is thought to be questionable, as unlike Ridgeway's other victims, she was younger and not known to be a runaway. The only evidence that may have linked Vorak to the Green River is that she apparently roamed around the streets of Tacoma, near the area where many other young women were taken advantage of and where many lives were taken. 
Borak was added to the list of his victims in May of 1993. This case, like the first two, also remains unsolved. One can only hope that both Song and Vorak are somewhere safe and will be discovered eventually and return home to their families and friends. We can only hope that the perpetrators are discovered and brought to justice so that their families and friends can find resolution and peace. The Mystery of the Marlborough It is not uncommon for ships to be tossed to pieces at the mercy of violent storms brewing in the deep sea or spit onto unseen coral reefs and shredded by the underlying rocks. Occasionally, a ship will simply disappear and leave the family members of her crew to wonder at its fate. This appeared to be the case with the Marlborough, which was a large, iron merchant ship that went missing in 1890 after setting sail from New Zealand in January, on its way to bring wool and frozen meats to London. In those days, it took many months to make the treacherous passage across open seas. Occasionally, the ship would fall prey to the submerged icebergs hidden off the coast of Cape Horn, or some other dangerous hazard lurking in the open sea and would never be seen again. So, when the Marlborough still had not arrived at port in April, it was assumed lost at sea, not an uncommon fate for merchant ships at the time. However, the case became instantly more mysterious when the Marlborough turned up again 23 years later in 1913 off the coast of Cape Horn, with the skeletons of her crew scattered curiously all over her deck. The report of the sailors who found the remains of the ship reported that about 20 skeletons were found on board and in a lot of different locations. One was found alone, directly under the wheel, and another one found alone on the bridge, with five more nearby. No less than three skeletons were found by the ladder leading below the deck. The largest group found in a single area consisted of ten skeletons, in what is known as the mess room, the main social quarters of the ship. The most mysterious part of the discovery of what remains of the Marlborough was the placement of the skeletons. Because they were scattered throughout the ship, as though going through their normal operating routines, they must have all passed away abruptly from the same thing and all at the same time. The bodies in the hatchway suggest that they may have been running from something, although the other bodies throughout the ship rule out being rounded up by pirates and dying. Additionally, what was presumably the captain was found under the steering wheel, as though he passed away while trying to direct the ship, which would be an odd priority if your crewmates were losing their lives. Although the mystery of the Marlborough has riddled mines since its discovery in 1913, and the ship was thoroughly searched for clues at the time of its discovery, we will likely never know the circumstances that led to this unusual placement of bodies throughout the ship. The Mysterious Disappearance of Esther Dingley Esther Dingley was hiking alone through the Pyrenees Mountains this past November when she abruptly disappeared. Dingley, a 37-year-old from Durham, England, was trekking solo through the mountains from Spain to France and set to come home on November 25, 2020. The last communication she had with family was three days prior when she messaged her boyfriend via WhatsApp and sent him a selfie on top of a mountain. Dingley and her partner, Dan Colgate, are avid travellers and have spent the last six years adventuring around Europe. Just before her solo trek, their story of living the van life since 2014 was published by BBC News. Dingley had taken their camper van for her whole trip while Colgate stayed at a farm in the southwest of France. It has been over two weeks since she first went missing. Police opened up a missing persons case and have been circulating posters of Dingley around the area. Various mountain rescue units have conducted widespread searches but have been unsuccessful in locating her. They were forced to halt their searches due to poor weather conditions. Locals and authorities believe it likely that she fell into freezing waters and drowned or severely injured herself. They claim that accidents like that happen all year round, but especially in winter. They fear this is the reason why there is no trace of Dingley. The increased water depth and piling snow is hiding the body. There have been previous instances where bodies disappeared in the mountains during winter and then were found the following spring when the snow melted. Dingley was last seen by Spanish Olympic skier Marty Vigo del Arco and his girlfriend. On November 22nd, around 3pm, 
They were trekking down from Pic de Sauvegarde, an 11-point-mile loop trail near the France-Spain border, when they came across a British woman. She was still ascending and asked for some fruit. This trail is recommended only for very experienced hikers and is best used from May to October. About an hour after the couple saw her, Dingley sent the mountaintop selfie to her boyfriend. It's worrisome that she was still climbing up that late in the afternoon. It means she was on a difficult trail while in the dark. Her family are concerned of the possibility that her disappearance was not a hiking accident, but an abduction. On November 19th, Dingley received a ride from an unknown hiker, which she wrote about on her blog. Police are investigating all leads and possibilities and are searching for this hiker to question him. While they will continue to explore all avenues, the lead French investigator, Captain Jean-Marc Bondanaro, rejected the possibility of kidnapping, claiming that it was near impossible to be abducted while on the mountain. The case has been turned over to a specialised judicial unit in France to continue to investigate those odds. As winter approaches and the weather turns colder, authorities fear that their searches will stop. If heavy snow continues to fall, it could take months until it's safe enough for rescue teams to traverse the mountains and resume their search. But what do you make of these mysteries and disappearances? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.